My name is Roxy Monroe and you're here in my studio in New York City where I do art and write and illustrate children's books. I write nonfiction, informational books for children for mainly Holiday House. So here's a day in the life of the desert. Six desert habitats, 108 species, and how to save them. I'm gonna read you a little from the introduction. Then we're gonna look at some art, talk about what's in, and talk about what's in the book. So uh, we often think of a desert as a hot, arid, and uninhabitable place. Arid, yes. Desert precipitation is on the average less than 10 inches a year. Hot, yes and no. Some deserts often reach scorching temperatures of over 100 degrees during the day, but can be quite chilly at night. There are actually cold deserts. In fact, the Antarctica is considered a cold desert. Uninhabitable, not at all. Though there are very few large animals that can withstand the heat or make do with so little water, deserts are full of life. Reptiles, insects, birds, small billowing, burrowing rodents, as well as many unique plants. The desert residents had adapted to the desert. Many live without drinking water, manage to avoid the sun, and have colors or patterns that help them blend in with the landscape or reflect instead of absorb heat. At night, the desert becomes a whole different world. Many creatures are nocturnal. They come out after dark when it cools down, but lots of animals, other animals, are busy during the day. However, deserts are very fragile ecosystems, and we'll learn about this in this book and what we can do to help them. The animals and plants that live in an ecosystem are interconnected and need each other. Some bats are pollinators for plants like cactus and flowers. Deserts are homes to more kinds of bumblebees than anywhere else in the whole world, but they're declining too. The animals and plants in desert habitats learn to depend upon, connect with each other, and support each other in their communities. If one species dies or disappears, it affects all other critters in that habitat, and extinct is forever. So we're going to learn about a lot of the deserts in this book. We're um, going to go through 24 hours in the day of the desert. So you'll see what animals come out at night, and what animals come out during the day. In each spread, we'll have the animals during the day. And later on, you'll see the same desert at night with different animals. Lots of information about them. The Mojave Desert is the highest, driest, and smallest of the four main deserts that we'll be looking at. And then you'll have a list of some of the species, the animals that live here, and you can find them. Some of them hide, so it's gonna be kind of a challenge. Then we go on to other deserts, and we have a map in the beginning of the book of the deserts. I have visited five of these six deserts here in America to do the research for this book. The Great Basin, Death Valley, which by the way is so hot, uh, with global warming now that it has actually reached the highest temperature ever recorded this year. Uh, so we have Death Valley, which is in the Mojave Desert, the Sonoran Desert, the Chihuahua Desert, and the Painted Desert. So we go through the whole book and you learn all the different deserts and you look up these critters. And then when we get to the back of the book, we have more information about all the fun creatures and little personalities and how they interact and the odd little facts about them. Then we have pictures of the deserts and you have the answers. So you can find out which ones, which animals were there on that list we saw earlier during the day and which ones are there at night for each desert. So it's kind of a game. Now, also in this book, we have how you can help. There are a lot of ways you can help. There are many things that are destroying the deserts. There are pipelines, trash from human beings, mining and oil well drilling. Recreational vehicles are tearing up some of the landscape. Too much grazing, too many domestic animals being farmed on the deserts. Airplanes, pollution and noise, and even big, huge power lines. So also in this book, 
Luckily, we had organizations you can easily contact, and many of them not only give you information and sometimes allow you to adopt a desert tortoise or gray wolf, literally sometimes and virtually sometimes. Um, so you, they have actually letters sometimes that you can write and just sign your name to and send in order to help preserve our deserts. There are also fun words you can know. Um, and all sorts of kind of very important information that will make you understand and love these special ecosystems. I'll show you briefly uh, the art from the book. This is the cover before we put the words on. I always make my art a little bit bigger. This is the Chihuahua Desert during the day. You see all the creatures there. You see a big buzzard flying, butterflies, owls, snakes, rodents, all kinds of fun things. And this is the Chihuahua at night. An entirely different group of creatures come out at night. This is the Great Basin. Now this desert has some of the, um, oh, one thing that also, by the way, the deserts have is light pollution. And this desert is so high up and so protected, it has what they call the dark skies. You can see more stars than almost anywhere else on earth because the skies up there are unpolluted and we want to keep them that way. And then of course we have the Sonorian Desert. So this is on the cover of the book. And here you have all these creatures running around. Again, deserts, uh, vultures are there, and we have um, butterflies, we have a little owl hiding away. So, A Day in the Life of the Desert, Books for a Better Earth by Holiday House. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope that you're able to take action to save our precious earth.